Hello everybody and welcome to our new video training package of Abacus. Simulation of composite pack damage in 3D continuum element. The deadline for your solid mechanics project is fast approaching and you'll starting to feel overwhelmed. You'll spend countless hours scoring the internet for sources but nothing seems to make sense. Do not close this video, maybe it is your missed solution. The first video opens with a simple explanation of composite damage theories using real-world examples to illustrate these concepts. As the series progresses, you learn about puck damage criterion. The instructor walks you through each example, showing you how to identify the key variables and calculate the necessary values. By the end of the package, you feel like you have a solid understanding of the fundamentals of writing UMAT or VUMAT and USDFLD for modeling puck damage criterion. You're able to tackle your project with confidence, knowing that you have the knowledge and skills to success. We talked about the content of this package. Types of failure in composites. Depend and not depend failure mode criteria in composites. The most practical damage criteria of composites and writing UMAT VUMAT and USDFLD subroutine for modeling puck damage theory for 3D composites. Hello, dear friends. In this package, we intend to estimate the damage in composite materials using puck criteria. For this purpose, we can get help from UMAT VUMAT and USDFLD subroutines. Stay with us to learn more about this topic. Now let's see the syllabus of this package. In Chapter 1, we learn types of failure in composites. Fiber bricks, fiber buckling, matrix tension, matrix compression, and shearing. Chapter 2 is about Independent failure modes criteria in composites. These criteria are T Sai Wu, T Sai Hill, and Hoffman failure criteria. For chapter 3, we will have dependent failure criteria in composites. This chapter is also divided into non interactive and interactive parts. In the following, each of these will be explained in more details. In chapter 4, park and hashing criteria are explained in detail. These criteria are one of the most widely used criteria for damage estimation in composites. In the next chapters, damage estimation will be taught by writing different subroutines. In chapter 5, the UMAT subroutine is explained line by line. And the flowchart related to this subroutine is also provided. And after that, we will validation um, UMAT subroutine with Abacus Solver. In the next chapter, the VUMAT subroutine is presented with a flowchart and line-by-line -line explanation. In the last chapter, the USDFLD subroutine will be presented based on the PAC criterion for damage estimation in the composite. Join us to learn this important and practical training. Let's start the training. At first, we want to talk about the PAC criterion. Two different types of failure or fracture are considered. Interfiber fracture or matrix cracking and fiber fracture. The most noticeable difference between this criterion and the ones proposed by Hashin is that three modes of matrix cracking are considered, differing in the angle between the fracture plane and the lamina as well as in the type of load which causes the fracture as shown in the figure. A is a schematic of action plane concept and the definition of acting stresses on the fracture plane whose angle is denoted by the by theta fp. B is the schematic of the exposure fracture fe where fe is the exposure fra uh, factor at the failure point. The interfiber failure criterion is only a function of the stresses acting on the fracture plane. If the normal stress is positive, this equation can be used. 
and if it is negative, we can use this equation. In the equations shown in the previous slide, there are parameters that need to be calculated. Some of them are the failure resistance normal to the fibers or the shear resistances. The parameters presented before can be calculated by using these equations. Now we want to explain the code of this subroutine line by line. We display the code using Visual Studio software. Here are the notes written in the form of comments by default on all the subroutines of our package. And after this part, our subroutine starts. As you know, at first, all the parameters and variables in the code need to be introduced. In the first part, the parameters to be calculated during the code are defined. such as stress, strain, or Stefan's matrix. Note that we have to calculate all these parameters and these are not inputs. The size of these variables is also defined here. And then, in each step, theta value increases from minus 90 to positive 90. Now it is necessary to calculate the stresses that we'll need for the next equations. First the normal stress and then the shear stress are calculated. The formulas for these calculations are taken from this reference. Here you can see the formulas related to these stresses. You can see these values in this figure. This is the normal stress on the failure plane. For the models that we analyzed by explicit solver and standard solver, the values of TSI Hill and TSI Wu criteria were close to this value. State variable 5 is also failure in the matrix. And these values show that composite ma matrices are damaged under compressive load. After the explanation about the VU mass subroutine flowchart, now we want to learn this code line by line together. We go to the Visual Studio software to see this code. Like UMAT subroutine, these initial lines are related to the company of this subroutine, which is caeassistant.com. And our subroutine starts from here. This subroutine is very similar to the UMAT subroutine. And the difference is in the parameter names. Also, we have a variable here called end block. This variable indicates the number of material points, which they're used to determine the dimension of the variables. In this subroutine, normal stress and shear stress are shown as follows. If you look closely, the writing format of the rest of the variables has also changed. but they have not changed conceptually. The rest of the variables are the same as the previous subroutine, with the difference that the desired element number is written in front of each one. Now, if the value of Fmax is greater than 1, it indicates damage in the matrix. Therefore, the value of F2 is equal to 1. But if this condition is not met, the value of 2 will be equal to 0 and its value is saved in state new km2. As you can see, the results are very close to each other. 
Now we will try this analysis for the case where the load is compressive in the y direction. Again, it is clear from the results that the answers are close to each other. Finally, we perform this analysis when the load is tension and in the y direction. In this part of chapter 7, we want to explain the USDFLE subroutine code line by line. As mentioned in the previous section, like the UMAT subroutine, this subroutine is used in the Abacus standard solver. Like previous subroutines, these first lines of this code is to respect the property rights of uh, caeassistant.com. The USDFLE subroutine starts from this part. In this subroutine, the written format of all variables and parameters is the same as the UMAT subroutine as you see here. In these lines, we determine the dimensions of the variables. All dimensions must be determined with respect to a 3D element. And here also, all the parameters that are used in the code in the, uh, in the future are introduced to the code. Note that, in this part, we don't need to enter the properties of the composite material anymore. You can see in the following that by specifying the value of field 1 and field 2, these properties can be obtained from the property module of the Abacus software. According to the code, we have 5 variables. Therefore, this value is equal to 5. If you remember, in the USDFLD code, we had to fill the field 1 and field 2 at the end, so that we can get the mechanical properties of the composite from Abacus. Those fields are defined in this section. As before, we can see that the results of the subroutines are still close to results of the Abacus standard model. So we make sure the validation of the written subroutines with different loadings. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and it was efficient and useful for you. I hope you have got enough information about this package. But don't worry at all. If you have any questions about this tutorial, ask us via support at caeassistant.com.